our policy failures uh, begin with people we put in office that completely misunderstand us. Mm. Uh, they don't know who we are, mm. and they are there because you know either they came from famous families uh, or somehow they have a lot of money, mm. you know. And then we put our trust and faith and hope to these people mm. who, with all due respect, mm. I think most of them are below average. Edwin, when you joined the media, you innovated around conversations. Um, you started the trend. Yes. Um, then, but you also, I mean, I, I asked earlier about the, the the organization that you started that was mentoring young. Yes. People. Yes. So, so how how what what, do you, what what led you to to this? Okay, so let me talk about first the trend. Mm -hmm. um, so I when I joined. So I, I was in radio first. Mm. I went to radio, I don't know if you know yeah. this. I was in Capital FM, first in KBC for mm. a very short period of time. Mm. Then to Capital FM. Um, and then I sh found myself on TV. Mm. Um, and then I had this problem that the system, the TV system wasn't speaking to everyone else. Essentially, uh, in our time, for people to come to the studios, they had to either be politicians or CEOs of whatnot. And that felt a bit wrong. And I was like, that doesn't look a bit more inclusive. I'm you know? remembering the, that footnote of uh, that that story in, yeah. in Korogosho. Yes. It was, was featured. It was very, yeah, exactly. Very featured. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. So, so then, so after eight months, I got, um, I got bored. I went to my boss and I'm like, I'm, I don't think I'm providing anything in this space because all I'm doing is just reading news, which is good. I think everyone can read news. But and I was like, what else do you want to do? I hadn't thought that far. Mm. So I was like, <laughs> let me come back. <laughs> so I went back and I was like, perhaps the thing I can do is just open up this space um, and have a platform where everyone can walk in. Everyone should walk into a TV studio. Why not? Um, and so I came back with this idea of, of, of calling it the trend. And the, ideally, the idea was, um, for whatever the big issue is, it's not about just the people who are at the center of it, mm -hmm. the people who get affected, and these people who have other ideas on how to do it. And so this is how artists, musicians, Anyone else can work in bloggers and the rest of it, if you like. And the first time I presented this idea, I think the editorial board just was, was like, what? We cannot, you see, part of the media and journalism job is, is a gatekeeper, you know, in a, in a big way. But like, what if you bring someone on the studio and then they say something that we are unable to, you know. Oh, he's rebellious. Yes, yes, yes. Like, what, what do we do, yeah, you know? Yeah. And I remember answering this question, I was like, I have no idea what to do, all right? Uh, but first... I think the most important thing that we'll do is let's bring someone else who's not a politician mm. into the set. Let's bring someone else who's um, maybe an artist into the set. And let's ask them the questions about what's happening currently in this country today. Or the biggest thing that happens, which we call the trend. All right? Uh, and they allowed me to do it. Of course, it was the era of uh, social media. Yeah. So social media was checking in. It was just checking yeah, in, yeah. you know. So they cautiously allowed me. Mm. I was like, because a young man who's mm. going to cause problems, mm. you try. Um, and they give me a slot uh, Friday night where mm. no one essentially no should one be is watching, watching TV. TV. <laughs> yes. It's like, even if you mess up so much, yeah. that Friday night, nothing's going to happen, you know. And so we started. Um, and in two months, it was the most important show. It was the show, thing, yeah. You know, because it was not true that people would watch. You got to start watching TV again. I'd stopped watching TV. Great. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I, I remember so. one of my best shows, actually two shows, mm. Um, one was with Helen, you know, during the finger of God uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, thing. Um, he came to the show and came with the saxophone, mm. you know, um, and he sat there as like, look, we have one hour to go through what this thing was, uh -huh. you know, before he couldn't because he was showing up doing, you know, interviews here and there. Mm. Um, and, and our tagline. And there was mm. hell on earth, mm. you know, and he hadn't seen it. Mm. So he started talking. Then he saw the, saw the TV screen. He's like, mm. oh, it's hell on earth. Mm. <laughs> it was a play on his name. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's like, can I play a song? Mm. He's like, what tune do you want to play? Mm. So he played out whatever to calm himself. Mm. And then spoke about the Starunga thing and Quincy Timberlake. Mm. Um, you know, that thing that, that happened. I think it still mm. remains unresolved. Mm. Um, and... The feedback was people are like, you see, 
what we wanted a lot more was mm. people at the center of things mm. to explain themselves, mm. you know, mm. and that's it. And Biguna Migunan wrote his first book, yeah. you know, Peeling Back the Mask, you know, came to my show, uh, always a difficult person to interview, mm. but spent one hour, you mm. know, fighting with him, mm. uh, possibly sweating a lot. Mm. Um, the head of, uh, I think the MD of KPLC, mm. you know, in the beginning, these people were not coming to programs, you mm. know, he showed up. Um, and he's unable to explain to himself mm. because what we do then was we leave social media to run on the on, on the counter of the screen, and people start asking specific questions and say, "I am in Kayole Space Y. My number is this. I've not had electricity for the last six months. Mm. What do you have to say about it?" And it's like, "Yep, talk to that guy." Mm. And it's like, "No, no, no. I have to go back to the office and see what is happening." Mm. And it's like, "But it's not about that one person. Mm. There's like hundred of those guys." who are watching tonight, mm. who have not had electricity, they've been disconnected, they're being asked for all this, you know, money to pay, people mm. are these cartels, blah, blah, blah. He was unable to do it, you know. Mm. He left the show, he was very angry. Mm. Uh, they wrote an email, no one, something, a threatening thing to nation and say, oh, we are withdrawing all the adverts, mm. you know, from the nation. Mm. You've humiliated our guy. Yes. Yeah. Like, you know, it happens, happens. But mm. progressively then we learned that, um, these spaces are supposed to be our spaces. It's for everyone, you know. And thankfully, it took off. And you go to a point where now they were seeking appearance. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, 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 yes. And that TV station started, yeah. you know. And that for me was mm. my cue to exit. Mm. It's like I've done my my mm. bit. Mm. It's been fantastic. So I left, and then someone else would come in, and someone else always come in. Other TVs always created platforms, and now creating different platforms for people to show up, uh, or for us as a people collectively, you know, showing our frustration is a thing, and, and I'm grateful and thankful for that. To your other question about what we do with young people in, um, in Korogosha was, um, I felt that um, we, don't, we don't have enough talent um, to tell our own story for our own people, not for the outside world, all right? There's enough people who come into these places with videos and cameras and all those things, and they curate very good stories, they take to the US, they take to everyone else. Um, which is okay, it's good. You know, some a lot of good things come out of that. Mm. But there's not enough that actually lives in the community mm. that just tells the community what we are good at mm. and what is happening, you know, how do we resolve our own conflicts? If mm. there are any, how do we uh, define progress um, and, and define success for mm. all of us? Yeah. And so we thought then that my only contribution, my biggest contribution would be um, to have a small team of young people um, that I can work with for a whole year. And they can have different interests, but the common thread is what we do has to be a thing that remains in the community. Mm -hmm. Okay? Whether you want to write plays, uh, whether you are a photograph, you know, photographer, uh, whether you... Now you want to be a podcaster. Um, it has to be a thing that remains the community first because we don't feed our communities at all, you know. Um, and just the nature of how the business is of, of media is, um, people have to pay for it, you know. So people pay for the paper, people pay for subscriptions. Um, people have to have a viewing thing to watch the TV thing um, and community chances that doesn't have that. So how do we create that for the community? So what... What we decided to do was to create um, a small system um, because my contribution, I think, like I said, my only contribution mm. that I felt I can do mm. consistently mm. Um, with friends, of course, and partners now because, you know, I have friends, is to have this sort of one-year mentorship period of young people in the community mm. um, can be wherever they want to be, mm. but to be storytellers, mm. all right? So we pick from 2014, mm. 2013, actually, mm. um, myself and, you know, other collaborators mm. and, you know, Raphael Lobojo, I think, mm. you know, Raphael, um, Kima Ninzane, you know, a lot of guys who I went to school with, uh, my childhood friends, we started this very small place and say, we'll create a space for the young people to come and experiment themselves, mm. um, have opportunities to challenge themselves, have access to us mm. um, in the community. And then just be the storytellers, mm. you know, do something with your talent mm. um, that helps us to understand us. Um, and, and that has been a revelation for, for all of us. Um, it 
we have photographers who've done fantastic work. They've gone to exhibitions up to Europe. Um, we have people who are writing plays. Um, we have, you know, fantastic videographers. Um, amazing storytellers, you know, someone who's still doing a story, like following a story for about three years, you know. Within the community. Within the community, you know. Um, and, and, and for me, I would like to see more of that. I'd like every community to have that. Um, because primarily at, you know, at the base, if you're going to change anything, it's a community understanding itself a bit more and being served a bit more information for itself, you know. And the thing about that system, I think that um, for me personally, I like is that then even the management is in the community. So if someone writes something that is not right or something that is a bit false or sensational, it's managed in the... The accountability is there. Yes, it's in the community yeah. level, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and that's an important thing and a big thing, you know. If I think of it in terms of a wider thing, sort of like journalism is to solve it, is to say uh, journalism hasn't gone back to the community, you know. It's possibly gone too far. It's now international and whatnot, but it's not rooted in any community. Like, we don't know so much about just the people who work in Marikiti, mm -hmm. you know. We don't know anything. There's nothing that happens every day that we can read about, you know. We just know someone tells us the prices of Waru today is 3,500 of cabbage and whatnot. But people work there, you know. Who's the profile of these people who work there? Uh, during the pandemic, we, and just because of this, during the pandemic, um, I remember because everyone was, you know, quarantining and, you know, washing hands and doing what... Those nice things. Those nice things that everyone was supposed <laughs> to do. Um, the people in the community were not doing any of those things. And like, what do you mean to quarantine? We have first one room, okay? Yeah. How are we quarantining this one room? <laughs> yeah. Then and you like, are telling us to wash hands. There's no Where? Yeah. Yes. Which yeah. what are we going to wash hands? These sanitizers, what are they supposed to do? And where are we getting them? Um, and masks, of course. And so I remember one of the things that we did was to go back to the community and do stories mm. and, and profile, you know, the Mamborgas in the community. Mm. Um, who had an interesting thing and... and uh, that was happening. And that's why I say like stories of traders, for mm. instance. What happened was uh, all these mamambogas were still operating mm. months after the shutdown. Mm. And the idea was that they should not be operating. They should be closed down mm. and whatnot. But they were operating. They should disappear from... Yes. Uh, yeah. But they were operating, yeah. Um, and so we went and spent time with them and realized that the mamboga in uh, Korogosho, so from Jinga, gets a thing from a middle mamamboga in Marikiti, right? The woman in Marikiti gets um, her thing from a middle person who owns a truck and travels to Kisi, okay? And every two, three days brings the product. She has to be there, uh, gets uh, X number of banana branches. These women show up from random places in the community and gives them for free, mm. okay? Because she got it for free herself from the trader mm. under the farmer. Because mm. the farmer had this thing growing, mm. you know. So, mm. but I've done mm. business with you for a long time. Yeah. So to track this system of credit, mm. the system of credit mm. um, from Korogosho all the way to Kisi was such a fascinating thing to do. Mm. Uh, because all of a sudden it reveals to us on what we thought we knew about business or what we've structured as business in the business lingo of access to credit, you know, women in business and all those things uh, to be many things than just very big words that don't mean anything. That the community actually survives on a different level of credit, which is the honesty in credit, okay? So this woman gives the person uh, in Madare uh, their daily foods for the next week. The person in Madare will finally get paid. Mm. They pay. She pays up. Okay. Such a trust network. And that money goes up to whatever. And that's how we survived the pandemic. You know, everyone asks, oh, how did we survive the pandemic? People collapsed and stuff. Yeah, people collapsed, I'm sure. So businesses, structural businesses collapsed, right? But the business, the community did not collapse. The community businesses were, no, they did not were at all. based on trust. Yes. Uh, and, and they're and still and based on trust today. Uh, yeah. And, and they're still working, you know. And I think for me, that's the one of the things that is very important. And, and I want those kind of stories um, not only be told because of the ingenuity, but be told because that's a thing that has been there for a long period of time and we can learn things and survive with them. You know, we have no need to create new other things 
that uh, I mean, I'm happy for Harvard Business School to come up with a new concept and stuff, mm -hmm. but maybe that's Harvard Business School, all right? The Marikiti Business School does extremely well, yeah. and and it's working. And it's been consistent. And it's been consistent, and it's feeding us. Uh, why do you want to change that? You understand? We can make it better. We can learn to make it better. And for me, those are the stories that I think we are not telling enough, and we should tell them enough. We should find more spaces like that. Um, the, the trust network is is a huge thing. Um, that uh, this country, most communities actually work with and and, and believe in. Mm. Um, they are tools too. Yes. Mm. So that that for me is the, it's perhaps the biggest thing with with this you know thing that I was telling about that we need to do and and mm. that thing that we are doing with the kids mm. um, is is to find those things and mm. and make them consistent, not make them once in a while. Mm. You know. Um, also, I don't like the idea of. Um, of, of using one story to describe everyone, mm. you know. Mm. Um, I think it can be representative, mm. but I largely, largely think that what we need with ourselves is to agree that we can find things that are good for us, things that are not good for us, and find them consistently. I mean, the same community has stories about extrajudicial killings. It has stories um, about abortion, you know, you know, early marriages and things. You know, the same community has fantastic stories about like I said, Mamambogas who are serving many communities, many, many people, and um, they have been working and they're very consistent for the last 10, 15 years. Mm. They've done this, you know. Um, it's the same place that has, um, you know, great teams of young girls who are trying to learn how to code mm. um, and, and by themselves, you know, by, through one computer or two, two laptops. So those stories should be a lot. It should be inform us a lot, as opposed to be the, the examples that check in and disappear, and then it becomes the story for the world, as opposed to the story for the community. So it's sort of like a race to the opposite, you know. And, and hopefully we can eliminate the parachuting of, of, of um, filmmakers and everyone else into communities to create this cinematic um, uh, community of, of artists. Glamorization of, of poverty. Yes, yes, yes. Hopefully we can mm -hmm. stop that, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and, and because stories um, are supposed to, to inform all of us. You know, um, I like this, this quote um, from Chinua Achebe. Mm. Said the stories is, is how we learn mm. as a community. Mm. Um, and say without the stories, we're like blind men mm. uh, walking into a fence of cactus. Mm. You know, mm. um, there's no warning whatsoever mm. if, if we don't have stories. You just turn. Yeah, mm. we're just like blind people walking across. Mm. Um, and, and I think we should, we, sh we should find ways on how to, not to glamorize stories, and, but to, to make sure that stories live next and next to us. Mm. It's because they inform us things, you know, they tell us about ourselves. We learn more about ourselves through storytelling and stories, mm. however form that mm. they take, right? How do you stay rooted in the community? Because it's very easy to get caught up in you know, in this Nairobi and the world, um, <laughs> you know. Yeah, it's a difficult question, man. Yeah. Um, I think, like I said, uh, see, I was, I was born in this community. That there's no way this community can be unborn in me. It's, it's always going to be there, you know. I was born on a Wednesday afternoon uh, in the streets of Korogosho. Um, it's always going to be there's only going to be that mm -hmm. i think that what i strive the most is to is to say i offer something to the community mm -hmm. all right and for me i offer the community um a way on how to tell stories mm -hmm. right and that's what i do and i'll continue doing that mm -hmm. okay someone else perhaps might offer something to the community mm -hmm. and that is good and, and there are many other doing and there are many other doing other things yeah. you know and i think most of us if we do that um, ideally, we should uh, inspire all of us mm. to create this new place that we need, which is um, a place that we can call home, but a place that is in constant improvement. Mm. And the reason I ask that question is uh, because a lot of Kenyans are, are running away from that background, their backgrounds. You know, very few Kenyans, uh, majority of Kenyans come from, you know, from luck. Let me, yeah. let me not call it poverty, from luck, from um, a deprived background. And once we start making it in quotes, we don't want to be associated with that luck. Mm. So that's, that's the reason why I asked mm. that. Mm. Yeah, it's unfortunate that that, hap that happens, to be honest. Um, we, we can, uh, uh, the pretentiousness notwithstanding, 
I think you lose a lot of things mm. if you just don't um, accept where you come from, mm. you know, in, in, a, in a way that, um, and maybe sometimes maybe people that it defines them, you know, which is fine. Mm. Um, I think we all have to find different ways on what I think defines us. Mm. I think for anyone else perhaps who's, you know, uh, watching and would think of how do they reconnect, um, I think the best way is to think of what are you offering the community, mm. you know, and, and try offer that thing mm. that you'd offer simply without it becoming sort of like work, mm. you know. So don't go for the big grandiose things mm. if it's going to make it impossible for you to do it, mm. you know. Um, I know everyone wants to organize fundraisers, mm. you know, pay school fees, mm. um, typical things, fine. If this is your key strength, then mm. do it. But maybe all you can do is, you know, organize yourself and a few people to just do mentorship, mm. whatever that is, mm. you know, find a school next to where you're from, mm. create a monthly, a whole term kind of situation scenario mm. that you just go back and spend time with people. Like I said, one of the things that is very important for, the, for people in the community is to find this ray of hope mm. and a constant touch with there organized society mm. this organized society is where mm. you know you are yep. i'm not there yet you are that's actually where i'm asking where, how you stay <laughs> organized society right stay connected, yeah. um so so for me what it does mm. um it reminds me consistently every single day mm. um that i haven't made it yet mm. every day so mm. every time i have to contend i have to deal with i have to be in this space mm. it reminds me I haven't made it yet. Mm -hmm. And and that means I need to continue constantly mm -hmm. innovating and be good at what I do mm -hmm. and, and and growing. Because it's easy for me to think that I've made it. Mm -hmm. Everything should tell me that I made it, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Um and I need to avoid that. So for I mean, me you're that, a senior one of the top media houses in the region, you're one of the senior editors now. So you've made it. By not any, yet. Most Kenyan standards. Not yet, not yeah. yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, something so for I accept. I mean for that organized society that works, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but it's important for me to stay active mm. and realizing that we we have work to do and I get reverse inspired mm. all the time. Mm. You know, tell you what, the, the other day we were, you know, went to 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 uh, Gunyomo Primary School mm. um with with the Java Foundation to feed the kids. Mm. Um and Talking to these kids, um, one kid uh, told me that uh, he's the head boy. He wants, you know, to to go to Alliance. Mm. Then like, yeah, fine, you'll get to Alliance. Then mm. what do you want to do? Mm. He's like, you see what I really want to do? I want to come back and be a social worker, mm. you know, mm. and asked why. And he said, you know, the most important people that I've known in my life are mm. social workers. Mm. Okay. Mm. They're not engineers. They're not pilots, mm. you know. That yes. says something about his state of mind. Aware and, and he was so aware and I was so inspired of just how aware this kid was. He was only 13, but he's so aware about surrounding and himself that I think the next few weeks I was writing so many notes about my awareness and my sense of self, you know. Um, and I want, to, I want to constantly have that. And actually, that's, that's, that's the essence of that question uh, that, that I asked because, again, my generation... Um, wanted to run away. But with your generation, you are seeing uh, that sense of um, you've accepted who you are and where you come from. And you're not afraid of talking about it and going back to the community. And, and now, um, despite um, um, how debilitating those spaces are, we, we are seeing young people, like the, the one you described, Wanting to go back rather than wanting to cross over to go and live in Lovington or, or even just Buruburu down the road. Yeah. Which used to be like an aspiration for a lot of people I've spoken from. Yeah. Kurogosho. Like now people accept where they are and they expect, uh, accept that they can impact their communities. Yeah. 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 No, no, I, I think you're right. The, the only way we change these communities and these spaces is, is by not constantly throwing this slum upgrading thing, yeah. um, which I've had since I was born. Mm. Slums have been upgraded since I was born. Okay, consistently, the slums have not disappeared. And they will not, yeah, with this slum upgrading project. Mm. What will change is, if we change the economic conditions of people living in the slums, mm. the slums then 
disappear. Yeah, disappear. Because constantly, if I'm earning a bit more, I want a bit more for myself. Mm. I want a bit more for my children. Mm. And all of a sudden, you're like, no, 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 no. You see this space that we have here? Mm. Maybe we need to have a cemented basketball court. Mm. As a, you understand? And we can do it together, right? Maybe our children should not going to a, to a school where, you know, it's, um, it's earth road and whatnot. Yeah. Maybe that needs to happen, okay? Mm. And that's how the, the outlook mm. of the slum will change. Mm. It's, it's by changing first the economic conditions of mm. the people mm. and not just the brick and mortar. Brick and mortar, fine, mm. but it won't change anything, okay? Mm. Because what, what happens is, we can go today. Let's assume today we can have all the money to build high-rise apartment in Korogosho. I can guarantee you the reason of Korogosho will not be able to afford it. Okay? They will go to the next place and build the next slum. That's what happened in Kibra. I mean, with the slum upgrading. Yes. So, it's... it's the middle class landed in those houses. Of course, of course. So, the ones who live in those places now. Day. Yeah, yeah. 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 Because then all of a sudden what you've done is you've put costs that I didn't have. I have now a water bill. I have someone to clean up the place. I have electricity. I have all these things. Now, I cannot... Even if you say this thing is going to cost me 3000 my rent now is 800 bucks. Mm. So what have you done? Yeah. You understand? So, so you'd rather change my economic conditions, mm. build a system inwardly that makes me um, someone who's participating in the economic buildup of the mm. country so that I can earn the 10,000 mm. every week so that I can pay rent of 10,000 mm. in the month if that's what we are saying. And I think that's, that's illustrated also in the upward mobility of uh, people from, let's say, somebody like Russia, because mm. I know people who, who grew up in the... In the um, Mad house, those mad houses. Mm -hmm. um, eventually, their kids went and bought small plots in Kasarani and yes. other places and moved. And they moved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. that that happened. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, so, so to 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 the point. The point is, constantly, you you try and and I think every generation happens. Every generation tries to leave the other generation a bit better. You know. So the many many women who um, went through years and years of luck. And saved little coins to buy a small plot in Wiki, which is where most people in, in Korogosho left and went to, or in father's areas like in Kasarani or Roiro and the rest of it. Um, they were small plots. It took the, that generation a lifetime to buy a quarter of an acre because they were going for something like 50,000 or thereabouts. That's a whole generation. Once they left with their children, the children had hand up. They showed up and realized they're not starting from zero. They have a pit, you know, a quarter of an acre in Nuki. So they built up something in Nuki, yeah. right? Now, those children, today they're doing much better mm. because their children now can go to international school, mm. you know? Mm. And that's how you work out the slum mm. question mm. or the poverty question in many ways. We solve the problem from the human. The brick and mortar is just for sure, all right? It comes as the tail end, but we fix the people first. And, and that gives me the motivation of consistently um, to have this attempt to go back. Okay. So how do we fix our politics? Yeah, that's another hard question, I know. Like, you talked about community organizing, organizing ourselves politically differently. I've seen you push back at the politicians. Uh, you're at a place of also influence uh, where you work um, in the fourth estate. Um, you can influence the editorial stories, mm. that kind of thing. Or you maybe you cannot because, of course, you have shareholders to, <laughs> to, to please. But how do you, as a, as a person, feel like, what do we need to do? I think politics is, becomes very complex as a concept. I, our politics has several things that don't work. Um, one is, uh, as voters, let's look as voters first. Voters... Um, don't have a lot of information as they should have. First, to make um, a reasonable judgment about a person who's going to office. Mm -hmm. So because this lack of knowledge compounds the next thing that happens. But then we disconnect a lot because politics seems to happen in a back door, in a back room somewhere. Mm -hmm. So as voters consistently um, urge to find out what's happening, becomes draining, emotionally draining, um, and I have things to do, I have work to do, I have children to feed. I'm like, ah, I don't want to care about these things now. Mm. So I block them. So that, I think that's the first problem. The second question that happens in politics is um, consistently over a period of time, 
our politics um, as a country was was built as an extractive um, system. Yeah. So because of that extractiveness, two sort of ideologies came about. Um, one was um, how do I become the cleverest person and figure out how to get a department or a ministry and get something for myself and my people, all right? And that is acceptable. If I can show my people, quote unquote, that I can brand, that I've given you these things, then we are fine. Um, and then the next one was the one that challenged this extractiveness of politics, um, which started from the baseline, which was land. And the question of land remains unresolved because of land is the primary, you know, factor of production yes. and became a constant political fixture. Mm. So people like Pio Gamma Pinto, who had to be killed, and the rest of it, they followed this line where they saw what it was. They were like, we cannot move forward and begin to imagine second step, third step, until we solve the primary question, which is land and appropriation of land. And so those people had to gotten rid of um, because they were causing too many problems while we were acquiring and, you know, restructuring our political systems. Yeah. So those two ideologies then create the political sort of distance that we have. Now, the next problem that we have, which is, I think, more compounding is uh, somehow people who seem to rise to the top of politics um, seem to be the worst of us. You know, seem to be the people who um, want to destroy us, the populists, um, you know, uh, have questionable backgrounds, um, have a lot of money that cannot explain how they get it. These certain threads, you can put, you know, like five key things that a person rises to the top really has. You know, the, the person who becomes your MCA, member of parliament, senator, governor, and what have you. Now, how do we fix that is, is very complex and I think maybe starts, in my view, small places that we have, say, for journalism, um, to, to have a bit more um, sort of backbone um, that we've never had before. And, and I think from where the place that we work at the National, we're trying to have that. Um, and the idea is this, that it's fine for politicians and people in office to think that they can do whatever they want. Uh, and maybe they can allow it to think they can do that. But at the very least, if they do that, journalism should be at a place that the first line of defense that says absolutely no and do the pushback now. Is that enough? That's not enough. That's the nation I grew up on. I don't know where the, the nation lost its way. Uh, but in the 90s, that's the, the nation. That yeah. was the nation. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I think many things happened mm. in, in, in the journalism business, the media business, mm. between 90s and 2000s um, that uh, were different. So I think there was a golden age of media, mm. which is possibly maybe around 2000, mm. when, um, when Kibakis and the rest walked into office. Mm. And then media became a corporate entity, mm. you know. Mm. Um, and then there was lots of money. There was, you know, billions and billions of, uh, you know, of profits which went to the shareholders. But media in the beginning was uh, doing things for you. As, that as, connectivity, yes. that question of how do you stay connected. Yes. Media was connected to, to us. You yes, know, and we so, had a relationship with the columnists, although we, we didn't know them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, we felt like they spoke for us. Yeah, and they did, and they did. Um, so, because of those disconnects that happened somewhere in the two thousands, in the uh, I think the golden age of media, um, then what happens next in politics becomes fairly important because the political class, um, I think, around twenty thirteen, mm. um, pretty much since like twenty ten, I think, when uh, the Ocampo ICC question started happening which is a fallout of the 2007 election, mm -hmm. um, those preceding five years became a point of conflict between politics and media. Mm -hmm. And so the people who were in office in 2013 um, made it their point to do two things. One, to infiltrate the media, mm -hmm. which they did very well, mm -hmm. um, and then to use the powers that they have as government and authority mm -hmm. to undermine the media. Mm -hmm. So then the media faced these two uh, things in 10 or 15 years mm. that constantly either undermined or took things away from it. Mm. Um, and, and the undermining bit was the one that I think was, you know, uh, most dangerous mm. because uh, I remember many times, you know, 
10 years ago or thereabouts, you couldn't do a story or even imagine mm. to, you know, have a meeting in, in, in a newsroom. And the next thing is the person you guys want to investigate giving you a call. Mm. Okay. Um, so it became quite porous. It's already leaked. Yeah, it's already mm. leaked, you mm. know, because then the political class was really, mm. you know, in the space. Yeah. Um, and that to answer your question, this one of the disconnect happened because mm. the next thing that happened was this uh, actual targeting of journalists mm. who wanted to do something different or who were trying to report correctly. Mm. I remember I was in the standard. Mm. Um, we did one story um, about the Jubilee government then. Mm. They went to Kilaguni mm. for a whole week and spent about 100 million or something uh, on their um, on, on upkeep, right? And at the same time, there was this question of uh, the government had said, we were not doing well, so we are closing our belts and we're not, you know, going to overspend. The president, President Huru, then said that. Um, and then they went. Um, and what a diligent reporter just did is went to Kilaguni and asked uh, how much is a room? Mm. And they're told a room goes for this much. Mm. Um, how many rooms do you have? Mm. Okay, typically, if I want to get the whole place, how much will it be? Mm. And they're given all these things, mm. right? And came back and wrote a fantastic report. The Jubilee spends 100 million in a weekend. And I remember the phone calls that came down then. You know, it was hell on earth. You know, state house, bloggers, everyone. Like, you have been bought, blah, 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 all these things. Um, and, and they pulled out all the ads and said, you need to apologize. That was the story that got the nation, uh, man, it sounded. Yes. Ads were drawn. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Um, and, because and the government being the biggest advertiser. It, yeah, that's does, 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 does quite yeah. a bit of advertising. Yeah. And so, I'm using this as an example yeah. of, of just, this is like the biggest, but this pressure then was consistently building up every day. Yeah. Uh, editors have had to make a choice between, you know, who's, who's the person getting exposed today, who's, who's going to be the person that the board decides, you know, you're a bit more exposed politically, so we can't have you, um, because then you are, you know, at the point of collective, you know, and I remember the editor-in-chief, you know, staying the ground and saying, I'm not apologizing, I will not apologize for this. Mm. Um, and the CEO himself had to write the apology mm. and put on the paper mm. by himself, mm. you know, eventually got the editor-in-chief fired but then I think the curtain, uh, there's a case in court that mm. uh, got him back his, you know, his uh, severance package and that mm. sort of thing. Mm. Now that's just one. But I can tell you, in the last 10 years, what pe most people don't give journalists, I think, the, the benefit in doubt is you're forcing journalists every day to think, am I going to pay my rent or am I going to fight for this country? Yeah. Every single day, mm. all right? Uh, paying my rent means, and keep quiet, mm. Let the system does what it does. Yeah. All right. Um, fight for this country means let's do this expose. Okay. As soon as I do it, it might be an important thing. It might just be maybe a water racket that we are trying to, you know, remove somewhere that has connect the wife of someone connected. You know, that will get you fired. Okay. Easily. Are you exposing one of these blue chip companies? Easily. You yeah. understand? So that conflict of um of what we ask journalists to do today. Mm -hmm. Um, has put the newsrooms in a you know sort of perilous mm. situation where the inability to to be independent and be honest mm. has been removed. You know the space to just critique uh, government or politicians gets you uh, you know pointed out, yeah. and everyone is like, oh yeah yeah yeah. But you know you get paid by these characters. That's like, about your government. If you know this, why don't you expose it? You know, print out the Mpesa records plus the bank account records. CCTV footages and say, this guy is getting paid by uh, X number of people. And, and so that, 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 um, that happened. The second thing I think that also happened is that the partners that media was working with and doing things with, they also sort of disappeared, you know. And so from 2000s, the first civil society, I think, was broken by Kibaki yeah. and his regime. Yeah. Because Most of it went to government. People yeah. went to government. Mm. Um, and they went to government. Of course, they adopted the government talk mm. and government mm. speech. Mm. And, the, and then they knew the tricks. They, they knew the tricks. The, yeah, so they're like, no, 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 we'll tell you how these people go and get funds. Yeah. They do one, two, three, so you need to close down this one, yeah. yeah. So the civil society then got broken. Yeah. By the time 2010, 2013 comes about, yeah. uh, by the time it's dubbed the evil society, mm. it's step two mm. of government, which is now we know all your tricks. 
um, will not allow you space mm. to operate. And the civil society and the media mm. have always been partners, mm. right? Mm. And so when that um, sort of relationship got broken, there's a wedge that was given. Yes, and both sides then start having sort of difficulties on how to just de do things together, you know, have relationships and blah, blah, blah. The whole space just became dry, you know. So this, in, in my mind, I it's a very long way climb back. I don't how, think how are you doing that? Because I, I think of um, uh, the, the last few months, the yeah. headlines, the nation, Taifa, you guys are not um, holding back. I feel that what, what we are doing right yeah. now is um, to realize that our job, our jobs depend on uh, us having a relationship with the the reader mm. and the Kenyan, okay? And um, we can't fix what has happened before. It's the last 10, 20 years. It's impossible for us to fix the, the loss of trust, um, the degradation of the public space, the pollution of information and that space. There's very few things we can do to solve that. But what we're deciding to do today is to move forward by saying, um, we possibly are not where we, you, we hoped you wanted us to be. Um, we making mistakes, we'll make mistakes. But at the very least, from where we come from, mm. our disposition as journalists and as a newsroom in nation would be to be honest and be forthright. This doesn't work. Mm. If it's an investigation, we will go out and, 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 and reveal it. Mm. And if it's a political story, we'll tell it. Yeah. Um, regardless of who we are, who's, 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 who's on top, um, we recently told the story of how uh, Bomas, you know, um, was almost captured um, by state, and that was then, you know, Huru Kenyatta's side. Um, before that, we told stories on how uh, this, you know, government um, has taken corners on, 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 on some contracts um, and its beneficiaries of this thing were making money. Uh, and so then you ask, so who do we, who are we supposed to be, to be paid by if both sides then don't like us, yeah, yeah you know. Yeah. Which is, a, I think, it's a good. Strategy. Yeah, um, yeah. So, so, the, so, yeah. So we, mm. ideally, if you give us another year, okay, um, your faith and trust in journalism will be returned, and and not by us doing advertising. Is that a guarantee? Uh, it's a guaranteed, full yeah. guaranteed, mm. because because it's this one. It's it's a simple thing. You see, maybe not. I'm I'm, I'm not the one who will be there, mm. but someone else will be there, and we'll have the platform. Mm. And they'll do exact same things because what you've done now is you've cleaned up the slate mm. and say it fine. Every day the newsroom wakes up to a newer story. Okay. We're the only ones who uh, people think we can, you know, do exposes now. Okay. The rest, you know, not speak about yeah, them. The political cover and the, yes. the, and the financial cloud and the lawyers, of course. Perhaps, perhaps, yeah. perhaps. I mean, we've had this before. This is not, an, it's, it's not a new thing. Okay. You know, but before guys, no, Nisha has always had, you know, had that. Yeah. Uh, um, so, so the idea for us is to make sure that 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 platform, I mean, say, mm. is used correctly. Mm. You know, when we went, um, one of the most recent stories that we did was um, this show who uh, was Ruto's, you know, uh, seconder. Yeah. You know, and one of our journalists, you know, went and spoke to her. And she was obviously very angry, disillusioned by, you know, she's not being called anymore, she hasn't been given money, and that sort of thing. And um, out of the principle of how not to do no harm, we felt, as a total team, let's run the text copy first. Mm. And because she's just a woman, yeah. okay? Uh, in a market, you know, somewhere in Central. There's no reason for us to put on blast, you know? So we just did that. And state operatives, uh, be as it may, they thought, Ah, we can go. They go and find that woman mm. the next day. They record a nice video and tell her to say, oh, you know, yeah. nothing like that ever happens. Yeah. You know, I don't know where this story came from and whatever. And I felt sad because I had to make the decision. I felt very sad that I had to put the woman on blast, right? Um, because we had a video, all right, which we had withheld. I saw that in the yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we just had to put the video up yeah. and be like, we would we'd not have loved to do this, yeah. but since here we are, mm. then... Let the chips fall whatever could, they may. And we could now as a as a as a as a read as a someone who like a consumer I could tell yeah. now which which look the genuine. Exactly. The real you story. Know, yeah, yeah, the real yeah. story. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, so things like those. You know, so we 
ideally we want to be in a space whereby we can moderate the public space with genity. Like we don't want anything. Whoever wins, whoever benefits from the story, that's their business. But the public has a right to know. Yeah, the truth as of what we know, and, and I'm sure we'll make mistakes. You know, because no, I like I like for the story you gave of the hundred million in a weekend. Yeah, that is you're spending hundred million to go and launch a, a Wi-Fi. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, so that. But, but the yeah. thing I think what I like about, especially the new editorial team, mm -hmm. um, uh, that is able to navigate both, you know, the media space and the social media space and the blog, yeah. the blog, blog sphere, is that the last ten years, as you speak about, which is, and this regime, which is a continuation of the previous regime, the same coffs guys who are your former colleagues and all of these guys, is that they 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 can get away with spin. Yeah. And now you're calling them out. And I think they are like, now they are now learning that they can't get away with some of this. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So we have very difficult relationships, of course. Um, they, they call almost every morning pissed off about something that was either at night or someone said on the radio. Um, and, 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 and we recognize that you just do your job. Like, you know, one time, you know, during the Mandamanos, you know, one of my former colleagues, former desk mate actually mm. called me, he was pissed off, mm. you know, at 5.30 in the morning, I hadn't even woken up. Yeah. Like, I had to wake up and I'm like, what, what, what? Even the thing he's complaining about, I hadn't even seen. You know, so I listened. So, of course, put him on speaker. Then I'm like, I need to find out what this guy is complaining about, right? Um, and, and they said, made so many things. At some point, I told him, like, you see, here's the situation we have, yeah? yeah? What you're doing is a job, okay? And I'm also doing a job. It's possible that these roles will be switched yeah. yeah at any point mm. and it's also possible that none of us would be at this position tomorrow you know so let's be professional you know if there's something that that has happened wrong i'll find out and i'll fix it but there's no need for us to be personal and be this difficult and all those things because they can be you know and, and it's just because you know they have power and yeah. you know power balance mm. you know and that sort of thing and i think he stopped he listened he's like he stopped yeah, so you say what is the also problem? Also, I him, he had just got a call for Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so just, just say what the problem is, mm. you know, what the... And we have this every day, not even with politicians. Mm. Because journalism, in a sense, is, is a practice, you know. And we can make mistakes. When we make mistakes, we catch it early and we correct it, all right? We do as much as possible not to do no harm. So if there's a mistake, any mistake that has happened, it will be corrected, you know, prominently, okay? And we accept we made a mistake and we'll do better next time. But this idea that journalists cannot make mistakes, which is what sort of like they've built as a, as, as a thing, um, is, is, is undermining the role of, of journalism as mediators. Because what they're saying is, because we got wrong one thing, we have no right, all right, to continue calling them out. Yeah. And not just us, I think the entire blog sphere, right? Um, and that's a standard that does not exist anywhere in the world, all right? New York Times makes mistakes. BBC makes mistakes. We all make mistakes. Um, and it's not, I think, that happens very often. Okay? So we, if it happens very often, then we go back to editorial standards and be like, why are we doing this? Mm -hmm. And then we correct it, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and so, so as, as, as media today, I think, in Kenya, the biggest thing that we need to solve, not just us, is what is our role in a Kenyan's life? Mm -hmm. We need to solve that very quickly. Mm -hmm. And I think just right before the next election, mm -hmm. we need to, we have maybe a year or two, mm -hmm. To consolidate that thing and answer that question mm. independently and and quite clearly, because then there's bloggers, um, there's pages which mm. are looking for views mm. to advertise things. Mm. Those are those, you know, and they serve other needs. Mm. But the role of news media, what does it do for us? Mm. It needs to be very clear to you. All right, mm. when that is very clear, I think you as a people will become a bit much more. Um, concerned with what happens in the public space mm -hmm. when it comes from a source that you trust, mm -hmm. right? Um, and, and I think there's no democracy that survives anywhere in the world without a robust news media, all right? Very true. I don't think so. Mm -hmm. and, and I think we're making a really huge mistake and a disservice to the nation if we don't uh, crystallize that question right now and, and serve the people. And we serve the people by pushing back we make sure that investigations are done properly. We make sure that we cover people fairly and, mm -hmm. and we make sure that we remove the fluff that is around media space um, that doesn't do a lot of differentiating between us and, and other blogs 
us and pages that just want you know attention us and people who are looking for you know like i fight all the time and this is something that we do all the time is um if politician x does something that is very cool he walks on water um and his bloggers and people are taking pictures there does that deserve a headline you know i don't think so you know he already put his on his twitter pages um other pages will pick it up and say you won't believe 10 things that so and so did today <laughs> i think they should do that yeah, all right yeah. but we shouldn't do those things yeah, okay yeah. we we can have a picture but we shouldn't do those things that should not be a headline that should not be part of what we concerned i think if you wake up in the morning you should be looking at the paper and seeing okay where are not only the problems but the opportunities the good things that we're doing and the bad things that we're doing you know as opposed to politician x has hired 200 cameramen and you can find their pictures everywhere when you walk in you know that's not journalism and that is how we need to correct our space and i think uh, i think even what you're doing at a personal i mean it as with your show um i think that's the way it's the same almost uh, like a continuation of the trend it's giving space to other alternative voices uh, because our political class has also been uh, very adept at creating a binary it's either or you yeah, either yeah. zimio or mm. kk mm. but the the, the tapestry of the kenyan societies and there are so many other you know voices and and i think even i when i got into the the social media space was creating a space for conversation because we are we we as a society we've not been very good at having conversations and we're disagreeing because we don't have to always agree no, no yeah no, no i agree with you mm -hmm. uh, whoever told us that we have to agree or did a disservice to all of us mm -hmm. it's possible for us to have a conversation and say fine mm -hmm. it stops there yeah. okay mm -hmm. you have your point i have mine mm -hmm. and it's okay and and also it's right for two to be right mm -hmm. at the same time you possibly yeah. you're right yeah. and i'm possibly right and at right the same time friend. yes we're yeah. right yeah. um but there's there's an urgent need in our conversations all the time social political to close ranks very quickly and agree that this person is right and this other one is wrong and i do, and i think that uh, maybe it's a function of education i don't know um or maybe just as a people i don't know we we just want one person to to win another person to lose you know and and so that then also creates the problem of of politics that you were talking about earlier that um why did people for instance in um uh, in starehe mm -hmm. didn't elect boniface mwangi for instance why why didn't they you know um he was working for them uh, far much better candidates than the other character um but they didn't you know they elected this other guy who obviously they knew his history and then went nothing. into boniface's uh, then they come back to him DM. and they're like oh yeah 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 <laughs> yeah please help us here sort yeah. us this do yeah. all those things you know so so i think those things we need to be honest and mm. clarify why why are the people doing that mm. and and put you know all of us into question mm. you know voters are like mm. that in the last election mm. voters had from mca mp senator mm. they had loads loads of good choices all right but they made the choice that they made they've always had but they, um it's always been yeah yeah and, and and so we have to be honest and ask ourselves those questions yeah. and and don't close political conversations because pol elections has ended because politics is not about elections yeah. um and now more than ever we should be having those honest conversations and, and leadership is not just about politics it's not about politics election yeah. politics yeah. it shouldn't be about that yeah. you know not everyone mm. should end up in a ballot yeah absolutely not you know many people most of us don't want to end up in that space yeah. we just want to be where we are mm. we just want to affect what we can mm. and we move on mm. but for whatever reason because politics then attracts so much money mm. um deals and that sort of thing it's put us in a place whereby like i said the the people who uh, we could not leave our children with yeah like you cannot someone you can leave your child with because you know this person is not a great person yeah. at all mm. is the person that will someone who you not allow to run your company no You yeah, yeah get them to run your course no even if they cook your food you cannot not eat it yeah yeah but we allow them to to take over you know constituencies and send it you know we, we were doing an investigation earlier on in the term in the beginning of this term of this uh this season of politics and there like 67 MPs who are questioned on rape uh they've stolen from companies they've stolen from government they are in court mm. doing all manner of things yeah but they elected new fresh members of parliament elected all right And, and they've showed up and so you have to you ask yourself now cabinet what? almost similar story yeah yeah then yeah. so so you asked so whose problem is that mm -hmm. who's problem is that? around it uh, you asked i don't know how
uh, the society, and like this. But I have a theory around it. So if you look at the economy, the economic system, last 150, the capitalist economic system, mm -hmm. 150 years. Um, the people who came from Europe because uh, of lack of opportunities in Europe and went around the world um, and how they did it. Okay, mm -hmm. let's say 400 years, but mm -hmm. that has informed the last 150 years. Right. Uh, because it's of our colonialism and uh, slavery and that kind of thing. End of slavery and then entry of um, a different economic system where the last 400 years it's been about cheap labor. Yeah. So slavery was free labor yes. and then the cheap labor. Cheap labor. Yeah. Um, these guys came, raped, plundered, whatever, and made a lot of money, went back to Europe. And then there was now that thing of leg legitimizing their loot. Mm. So they created a legal system, economic mm. system, banking system, to help them do that. So mm. who are these characters? These characters are very nasty people. Mm. Uh, they were not, you know, the guys who came here, there's a, there's a video by Trevor Noah when he jokes around how the British went to South Africa. The guys were very nasty. They were just shooting you, killing you, raping your women. Taking things. Taking things. Yeah. Um, and taking them to the UK or to wherever. So those are the guys who created the economic system you're in. This is the extractive colonial system mm. is about those guys. Right. The legal regime, the economic regime, the banking regime. That's why we talk about justice. And uh, if you have money, you can get away with anything. Um, Trump said it in 2016. Mm. You can stand in New York mm. on Fourth Avenue, shoot yeah. somebody. The commissioner wrong. And, and nobody will do anything to yeah. him. Because yeah. you can get away with Yeah, you can. Uh, and That's you're true. seeing the struggle, even the one of the most advanced countries on the planet, mm. democracies, mm. is struggling to hold Trump to account. Mm. Today, is, as you're speaking, I mean, it's, it's, the front it's political theater. Yeah, it's the front runner. Yeah. It's the front runner. Yeah. It's so that's, that's uh, I don't know what you think. No, no, it. it makes sense. No, it makes perfect sense. I hadn't thought about it in that sense, but it makes perfect sense. It's a continuation of the historical um, systems that we have. Um, and Kenya has quite the most violent of history. Especially because the, the, the Wazungus who came here came yeah. to settle. They came to settle, yes. So they, they they put their system in place. Yes, yes. And so, there are still somewhere in the background. You know, some, someone was, uh, was mentioning this and said, you know, the biggest landowners in Kenya are whites. Um, they, they hold our economy. Uh, the biggest agricultural land that we have still takes things away from us. They're planting flowers and things. Instead of planting food yeah. and that sort of thing, coffee, tea. Um, coffee and tea. So, so yeah. So there's there's that there's um, question that we are unable to unbundle because of the system. That like we are. the guy you you always deriding, um, talked about how they gave up on the coffee cartels. They were defeated by the sub cartels. Yeah, but you know who who controls the coffee market in this country? Coffee is such a sad story. It's it's it's, an, it's I think it's one of the things that I haven't gotten round to gotten to unbundle. But I first. I think coffee as a product, because in East Africa and whatnot, I think Kenyan coffee was doing very well. Mm. Um, as a concept, if it was only helping um, to bring, uh, you know, as, as a cash crop. So if it was only just for helping bring money into the economy, mm. it was doing very well, could have done very well. Mm. I think somewhere in the 90s, 80s, coffee was doing around 40,000 tons. Yeah. Now I think it's down to 40,000 tons. Mm. So it's obviously going to be a dwindling, mm. you know, um, commodity. The problem with coffee, like everything else, mm. I think is the lack of systems, mm. the inability of, of Kenya creating a governance system mm. that is very Kenya East, if you like. Yes. Um, our governance system still borrows so much from what we got from, from, from the Brits. And the Brits, the system they created here, is not the same they have back yeah. at home. No, it was, it's the extractive one. Yes, yes, yes. Put yes. resources yeah. into people's pockets. Yes, yes, mm. yeah. At home, it's service, mm. okay? That's why if you go to Britain, Every, you know, couple of blocks, there's a primary school. Mm -hmm. Children don't have to go too far. Yeah. You know, there's a dispensary. You can find, go see a GP. There's, there's a system that is created to serve the people, right? Here, the same, like you say, to take things from people. And so managing people, you know, which creates our police force, yeah, our civil service that is very heavy, but cannot deliver anything, you know. I remember one of the best stories that we're reading in 2015, um, was when we put up the county government systems, mm. the first things, the first things that uh, Garissa County did, Mandera, 
Moyale, Marsabit. You know what the first thing that they did was to set up uh, units, mm. IC units, so that they can do um, cesarean sections. Mm. All of them did the same thing, you know. And the first stories that we all got from there, like consistently for like a year, was like the first twins in Garissa County through cesarean section. Oh, seven women give birth in cesarean section in one night yes. in Marsabi or whatnot. Yeah. Now, on the face of it, it's a beautiful story. Mm. It's lovely and brilliant. Mm. But then you ask yourself a, a, a secondary question. What was happening to all the women yeah. in these areas yeah. that needed cesarean section? Yeah. So with the that means we're dying. Yeah, mm -hmm. graves. Absolute graves. Um, and so our challenge constantly, I think, is to figure out how to create a political system or governance system, sorry, mm -hmm. that responds to us mm -hmm. in our unique way, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. um, and which doesn't put all of us in competition mm -hmm. because um, I think those one man, one shilling, one vote, one kilometer, whatever vote, mm -hmm. they're all nonsense yeah. because every community or every person who's in Kenya, mm -hmm. whatever community they come from, deserve to be the absolute first, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. in the country. Mm -hmm. And we should figure a system on wow, mm -hmm. we can find a thing that works for the Maasai, which is, and, and it makes him the first, mm -hmm. something that works for the people in Wate, makes them first, mm -hmm. something that works for the someone in Nyalenda, makes mm -hmm. them first. Mm -hmm. And that system is not this centralized system that the Brits created mm -hmm. that takes things away from us, yeah. you know. And I think that is the biggest challenge of governance. How do we operationalize our governance How system? How do you evolve our like yes. what the question did yeah uh, and how do we make the people of Korogosha the decision makers about what is implemented in Korogosha yeah uh, and I guess that's that's what you're pointing at and part of this conversation uh, and the Utu and the Uzalendo broadcast is is about mainstreaming some of these conversations from leaders such as yourself yeah uh, because a lot of us don't see you as a leader uh, I see you as a leader maybe the Korogosha community sees you as a leader but a lot of Kenyans don't see that they are leaders away from our politicians. We are so used to the political theater mm. yeah, yeah. that we don't see the other. Don't you need a political seat? Yeah. 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 That, that's, we have quite a bit of a mountain to climb there. We will. Yeah. Because uh, here we are. Yes. Uh, despite all those challenges that we, you know, we've, uh, we put, people, people complain that we're always pointing out uh, negative things about the country. No, no. Uh, I, I tell them is that we want the best for this country. I call it arrested development. There's much, so we have so much potential as Kenyans. We can just fix our governance. And I think that will start from having this conversation. Yeah, no, no. and thank you for yeah. having this. Thank you so much yes. for making time. Thank you, thank James. you very much. Um, Absolutely. I'm, love it. I'm so honored to be uh, having a conversation with you. I mean, you're, you're, this is your forte. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, so thank you for honoring us and let's, yeah. thank you for making time and let's hope that uh, we continue uh, keeping the conversation alive. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Mm -hmm. I think this is a good thing that you're doing. I think you should keep on doing this mm -hmm. uh, to show these alternative spaces. Yeah. And, and, and many people should come in place. And, and hopefully we learn a collective lesson yeah. you know, out of the people that you bring and host here. Yeah. Very honored to be here. Asante. Thank you. All right. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs>